and welcome to sweet hour of prayer here at Witherspoon Presbyterian Church in the city of Indianapolis. We gather on this, the third Friday in the season of Lent, to center our hearts, to listen for the voice of God, and to be drawn closer to Him. Sweet Hour of Prayer is a sacred time for the Witherspoon family, and so we are honored that you are joining us this evening. No matter where you are in the world, find a quiet place to sit and pray as we invoke God's presence, not only in this sacred place, but right where you are. Listen to these words offered to us by the psalmist David in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever my friends let us pray God of abundance and grace as we come to this sacred hour center our hearts Speak to our souls, O oh God. Draw us closer to you. Silence the noise of this world and the chaos of our lives so that we may honor you in every way. Surround us with your glory and touch us in our place of need. You know, O oh Lord, what we stand in need of. You know, O oh Lord, where our breaking point reside. And so touch, anoint, lead, and show us the way. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now in jesus name we pray amen our scripture reading for tonight will come from elder dr charles merriweather romans chapter 8 verses 31 through 39 listen to the word of god proclaimed What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is with us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? 
as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the presence, nor the future, nor any power, neither height, nor death, depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. How honored we are to have the Reverend Dennis H. Freeman as our artist in residence. And so I invite you again, my friends, to center your heart and allow the melodies of these sacred hymns and anthems to serenade your life. May you hear the voice of God and may you be drawn closer to him. Welcome again to Sweet Hour of prayer.
my friends join me on page 508 in our African American heritage hymnal blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretest of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit and washed in his blood this is my story this is my song I'm praising my Savior all the day long let us lift our voices beloved as we sing this great hymn of the church together verse 1 blessed assurance Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what? Oh, what a for? I cannot hear Jillian. Air, air of salvation. Of God. Born of his spirit, born of his spirit, washed, washed in his blood. Even online, join us. This is, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my story. This is, this is my song. I'm praising, praising my Savior. All the day. Come on, beloved. Verse 2. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Perfect delight. Oh, visions of rapture. Visions of rapture. Now burst on my sight. Angels descending. Angels descending, bring from above, bring from above. Oh, echoes of mercy, echoes of, of mercy. mercy, whispers, whispers of, of love. Everyone, all over the nation, this is, this, this is, is my, my story. story. This, this is. is my song I'm praising praising my Savior all the day long this is this is my story this is my song I'm praising Praising my Savior all the day long. Now, my friends, listen to this story. Taken out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Now, after this, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them he was very hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, tell this stone to be made bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The devil led him up to the highest point of the mountain and showed him in an instant all of the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all this authority and splendor 
it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I choose if you worship me it will all be yours Jesus answered again as it is written worship the Lord your God and serve him only and so then the devil led him again to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said to him again if you are the son of God throw down yourself here for what is written I will command his angels concerning you but Jesus answered again do not put the Lord your God to test when the devil had finished all of his tempting he left him until a more opportune time let us pray beloved gracious Lord we thank you in the stillness of this hour for how your spirit makes itself known even against the chaos of this world speak to our hearts O oh Lord may we be drawn in every way closer to you touch guide ignite and lead us in your way now O oh Lord may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Reverend Dennis H. Freeman a round of applause. Strange things do happen beloved in dead places here in Luke's gospel we find this story of Jesus being driven into the wilderness after his baptism you know that great scene in salvation history where the heavens were opened a dove descended and a loud voice proclaimed, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And here in Luke's gospel, he tells this story that immediately after that, Jesus was driven out into the wilderness where the Bible says that he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. This is where symbolically the 40 days of Lent comes from. These ceremonious seasonal days where we remember again what Jesus did for us after his baptism, the turmoil, the pain, and the sacrifice he made for you and for me. Lent, as you know, is described as a season of forsaking our flesh, sacrifice, alms, giving, and usually it carries with it a deep meaning, sort of dark and gloomy as we march toward the cross. But I am not sure that we give Lent its full due. I am not sure that it deserves the shadow that we cast upon it. Though we are called to sacrifice and to give up and to pray, things we should do all year long, beloved. But I am not sure that Lent is only about death and sacrifice. As I have said each day this week, I too believe that it is about resurrection and life. Certainly, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness as we are tempted in our own lives. We are tested and tried, and certainly that is no pleasurable part of life. We would it be that it would be different. Certainly, there is a part of us that believes or desires that every day would in fact be Sunday and Sabbath would have no end. But this is not life, beloved. But could it be? that in these dry seasons like Ezekiel, at 
these burning bush seasons like Moses, in the wilderness like Jesus, could it be that God is after something more than merely to test us, but to test us towards strengthening us for what lies ahead? Jesus was not tested, beloved, just for testing sake. God did not allow him to endure these 40 days of being tempted on every side by Satan because he's had nothing else to do. God knew that Jesus needed this kind of strength for the remainder of his earthly journey. And I would argue today, beloved, that we too are tempted in our own lives so that God may endow us with the strength necessary to make it, to succeed, to gain the victory over the valleys of life. This is what temptation is really all about. Every time Satan tested Jesus and tempted him, Jesus grew more and more in strength each time. Certainly he was weary, as many of you are weary. Certainly he was tired, as many of you are tired. Certainly he may have had moments where he wanted to end this sort of trial. But he continued to go on. Just like in Romans, the scripture that Dr. Merriweather read at the beginning of our time together, what truly can separate us from the love of God? If God is for us, who can be against us? Each and every time the devil tempted Christ and Christ responded again, as it is written, as it is written, he proved to Satan that he was no mere child, but that he had what it took to endure, to succeed, and to make it beyond this present point. This is why we journey through Lent, beloved. This is why we pray. This is why we sacrifice. This is why we read God's word. This is why we meditate so that our spiritual resolve might be made stronger and stronger each time. Do not be weary, beloved, in well-doing. Do not give up too soon. Do not throw in the towel because in the end, Christ has promised us the victory for those who are able to endure with faith. Is this journey perfect? Of course it is not, beloved. It has with it thorns and hills and rocky places. We will find ourselves terrified at the Red Sea. Sometimes we have to sleep in the lion's den. Sometimes, like Esther, we have to muster the courage to speak and to face our enemies. Sometimes, like David, we have to go out into battle with but five smooth stones and a slingshot. And just like Jesus, we have to face our own Golgotha. Nails in our hands, sometimes nails in our feet. And sometimes it may feel as though we too have a crown of thorns on our head. Is this the full story? Does it end there? Is Lent only about the shadow parts of life? Or is there a greater promise that God offers to you and to me? Yes, Jesus was tested. Yes, we must sacrifice. Yes, we must give. But we do these things so that we may gain our earthly reward. That we may be able to withstand the fiery darts of Satan. And so that our light may shine in this dark and desolate world. This is why we journey to the cross, beloved. So that God might do a new thing in us as he did that day in his son, Christ our Lord. We pray, beloved, that you may endure, that every round, in fact, goes higher and higher, that the frivolous things of life do not set you back, but that we believe 
that as long as Christ is on our side, we can make it. It will not be easy, but God did not promise it would be. We endure because God is with us and we will celebrate together when the victory is won. This, my friends, is the word of God for we who are the children of God. Thanks be to God. Prayer is how we strengthen our spirits. I believe wholeheartedly in the power of prayer. There is no other vehicle more powerful, more potent than prayer. And though we are unable to gather in large number, the Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst. I know you are tired, beloved. I know that this year of turmoil has taken the best of us all. I know that this Lent is unlike many. And yet God's voice calls out to us, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. And so tonight we offer these prayers of the people. If you are online and you have someone whom you would like to pray for, we invite you to put that name in the chat so that we may go to God on their behalf. And then those who are here in the sanctuary, if there is some prayer request you may have, we invite you to offer that at this time. Charles and Betty Merriweather, Keith Davis, Kenny Davis, and Steve Dixon, Dwayne Posley, Regina Majors. Will there be another? Christopher Thompson. Those who have reservations about receiving this vaccination, the Berry family for the loss of their family member, Christopher Smith, Evelyn Pace, Josephine and Julius Dix, Linda Foreman, Glenda Wilson, Jillian Harrison Jones, Winterborne Harrison Jones, Dobby and Heather Smith, Carla Marshall, Carolyn Murph, Rachel, Renee, Walter Hart, Keisha Dixon. Hmm. Reverend Dennis H. Freeman, Lois Keith. Yes. Benita Pittman. Guy Dilworth and family. 
Nina, Gerald, Nikki, Shamanique Graham. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look around, we can find ourselves in some places that we aren't familiar. God, this time last year we were gathering in our homes to watch Sweet Hour of Prayer because we were told that there was a national pandemic. But God, now we find ourselves in a different space. God, some of us find ourselves in the wilderness of life, hungry, tired, weak, unable to stand on our own. And God, we sometimes experience things that take the wind out of us. God, we sometimes experience things that knock us to our knees. God, it seems like if we hear news of one more bad thing, it just seems like we're going to lose it all. God, we reach for an answer and it just cannot come to our fingertips. We speak words to find a place where we can find solace in your spirit and yet we find ourselves empty unable to utter even a syllable. But God, we thank you for the miracle of you. God, we thank you for the miracle that allows us to see each brand new day, a dawning that we may have never yet seen before. God, we thank you that we wake up with grace and mercy to angels that encamp around us daily. God, we thank you that yes, we may be experiencing things that may be tough right now. God, it did not destroy us. God, we are so grateful that we understand that in our wilderness, you will be our provider. God, like you provided for the children of Israel who were looking for bread, you provided manna from heaven. And God, moments like these, moments when we can come into your place, God, moments where we can be communal with your children in socially distant areas, God, moments where we can hear music played by beautiful virtuosos, God, moments like this, when we can hear your word eloquently spoken that not only enrich our spirits but enrich our minds and our bodies as well. God, moments like this are our manna from heaven, are our miracles in the wilderness. God, our tears that we cry, water our gardens of misery till they grow forth fruit of joy, fruit of peace, fruit that we can taste and savor and say, God, if it had not been for you who was on my side, God, where would I be? God, if we hear news of a friend passing away one more time, but God, thank you for allowing me to see another day. God, if I hear the unemployment numbers again, but God, thank you that I have everything that I need. God, if I hear somebody else is in trouble, but God, thank you for being my protector and my provider. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, that even in the wilderness, even in the dry and dead place, there is still life within. And for this, God, we all give you praise. Now, Father, teach us to pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. As we all say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come. 
Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us all from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Let all the saints say, Amen. The Lord's Prayer, as played by Reverend Dennis H. Freeman. O oh Lord, now consecrate these elements of bread and wine. Remind us always, O oh Lord, that even in the wilderness, you have promised to be with us every step of the way. May this bread, O oh Lord, be manna. And may this wine give strength as we are drawn closer, not only to the cross, not only to the empty tomb, but toward a life renewed, refreshed, and resurrected. In your name we pray. Amen. Beloved, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after giving thanks, he said these words, This is my body, broken for you. Each time you do this, 
do this remembering me. You may eat. And then the Bible says, he likewise took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said these words, this is my blood shed for you. Without it, there are no remissions of sins. Each time you do this, do this, remembering me, you may drink. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy Let us break bread together. Let us break bread together on our knees. Help us, Lord. Let us break bread together. Our knees. When I fall, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh, oh Lord. friends as we leave this place remember that we are not tested and tried without end in sight through our trials and through our tests God is birthing in us a testimony of strength and victory remember the words of the Apostle Paul read by Dr. Charles Merriweather, what can separate us from the love of God? Oh no, we are more than conquerors with Christ who gives us strength. These days are dark, hard in their own way, and yet they are full of promise and opportunity. We must die but we die so that we might be resurrected with him. Keep the faith, beloved. Do not lose sight of the goal at hand, for God has promised to walk with us every step of the way. And so now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Go in peace, beloved.